Hello everybody and thank you for joining us. I'm going to put my video off to reduce the bandwidth. Um, I'm really looking forward to today's session and Suchit is going to be um, talking to us and has a fascinating presentation to put to us and we get the opportunity to talk about open principles and I can't think of a better way of spending some time um, today despite the busyness generally of our lives at this point in the year. Um, what I'd like to do first of all perhaps is just remind people about the Open Ed SIG and where and what we are. So ALT have kindly provided us with a, a community space. I'm going to pop this into the chat. Um, so this is, this is where you will find the Open Ed SIG. Uh, and you'll find as it's a community space there are uh, occasional blog posts going up there to discuss the whole matter of open and I'm just going to switch your mic off a little bit Suchi, for a second and um, you'll also see there's a community space where people can uh, join uh, the conversation and continue the conversation and you'll see some information about our mission uh, essentially what we try to do is to connect all things open and to ensure that uh, people really understand the open education agenda and I'm, I'm excited about today's webinar because it really sets the tone for the coming year I think. Um, so that's who we are and where we are. Anybody can be a member of the Open Ed SIG. Uh, you don't have to be an ALT member and there are details on that homepage about how to join us and there's a form you can fill in in order to join the Open Ed Special Interest Group. I'm delighted that we had a great uh, get together meeting at the ALT conference recently and uh, we've got two new members on board in the committee and I'm sure that will really um, reinvigorate the team. So it's great to have that. We've got a very lively team on board. So we're very um, active in social media. That uh, all important hashtag to look out for, especially if you're on Twitter, but also on G Plus or on other networks, is Open Ed Sig. And um, if you want to know who we are and where we are and what we're doing, then uh, please take a look at that, and uh, we can help join the dots. Uh, Tucker, welcome. Thanks for joining us. I'll just quickly remind people a little bit about the interface that we have here. So if you need to check your audio settings, come up to the top left under Tools and click Tools Audio Setup Wizard and just run that wizard to make sure that you can hear everything um, and uh, join in if you want to speak to us as well in the Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Also on the left hand side, although you can move these boxes, you'll see a chat box. You can type directly into that chat box, send a message directly to the moderators or to the full room and um, just press enter to send that message in. If you um, have any questions during the presentation, if you just preface your message with the queue, then I should be able to come back and return to your question um, after the presentation. You'll also see in the participants box that four sets of boxes. Now these are easy ways of quickly communicating through uh, emojis, your approval or um, your uh, uh, suggestions. So do use those. Uh, we will keep an eye on them. You've also got a way of uh, responding yes or no um, should we ask for information from the room as well and of raising your hand if you have a question so that we can deal with your question. Okay, so that's pretty much the housekeeping over. I'm going to uh, give Suchit his uh, microphone back and I'm very pleased to introduce you to Suchit Anan. You possibly, Anan, you possibly know him already and I had the pleasure of meeting him last night when we were doing the check and uh, everything was looking really good. So, so Chief, I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much for joining us today. So Chief, can I just ask you to press the talk button? Hello, everybody. Thanks, Teresa. Hope you can uh, hear me properly now. 
I'm actually connecting from a wireless connection, so I might, uh, you know, I might uh, switch off the video uh, now to make sure the bandwidth is uh, okay. Yes. So thank you again uh, for this great opportunity, and it's a great pleasure for me to share my experiences with you all today. I have been always inspired by the open education community, and it is uh, so. I hope uh, it, you know to come. Uh, to connect with you today and share our ideas on 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 this whole open principles in education and you know, the things we have been doing in Geo for all. So starting, I will uh, I was uh, I would like to start out by giving you some background. Actually, when I got this webinar invitation from Teresa a few weeks back, you know, I started preparing, you know, what I want to say for this presentation. It also helped me reflect on this whole geo for all journey and I'm not a native English speaker, I'm originally from India and I was looking for a word in English to encapsulate the journey and I found this word serendipity and it was exactly what I was looking for, you know, this word and the first time I was uh, uh, learning about this word and, you know, serendipity means it's like an unsought or unintended or unexpected but fortunate discovery or learning experiences that happens by accident. It's also a combination of events which are not in individually beneficial, but occurring together produces a good and wonderful outcome. And you know, when I look back at my geo for our journey, this is exactly what what happened. You know, it was not planned or anything. We had nothing, but it is just by this you know combination of a lot of things happening together. You know, it just uh, you know made made these things happen. And hopefully, you know, when I go through the slides, you will you know you will get a feeling of how we all started. But first and foremost, you know, I have to thank, you know, all of my colleagues globally, you know, who are who all have been, uh, you know, really helping this make possible. You know, and they, they are the key people who, you know, help, help this all possible. And, you know, I have to thank the whole geo community. And in simple terms, you know, the area of my research is on computer-based mapping or what is known as the GIS or Geographic Information Systems. And you must all have, you know, in some way or form, you know, must have all, uh, you know, use these uh, these mapping tools in, in your mobile phones. You're finding your spaces, you know. So it's now very ubiquitous. But I first came across GIS again by pure luck. You know, around 20 years back, I was a student in civil engineering in India at that time, and one day I came across an article in my college library. On this, you know, this thing of obviously geographic information system, uh, and that, that which was being used by town planners. So that article was mostly on, you know, how town planners were using this new technology, and that was the first time I heard about this, you know, amazing technology called GIS. And I still remember the struggles I went through to get access to GIS. I, in fact, I wanted to do my uh, uh, final year uh, final year project using GIS, but unfortunately, that time I couldn't, you know, I I, I just couldn't get access to it. So. You know, so it, there was a lot of uh, struggles and a uh, lot of uh, setbacks initially, but I was very lucky as by God's grace, you know, I, later I got really amazing opportunities later to learn GIS. I got scholarships from kind universities and a lot of kind people helped me along the way. So it was a, it was a really, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of help from a lot of people that helped me learn this. So, so hence, you know, when I, I now got this opportunity to learn this, I was very keen that, you know, I, I do something back. You know, I need to make sure you know, a lot of people who don't have access, you know, I need to do something back. And that was how, you know, the whole geo for all started. So through this webinar, I want to share why it's important we protect open principles in education and the vision of, uh, you know, what we have for the future on open geospatial science. I will also share some experiences from geo for all initiative on the importance of having open principles for empowering communities worldwide. Central to geo for all mission is the belief that knowledge is a public good and open principles in education will provide great opportunities for everyone. Though the members of our network ha are all from very different backgrounds and we all are, but we all come together to seek to eliminate the digital divide and to empower all as full citizens and contribute to build up open knowledge for the benefit of the whole society. So why is openness important? Okay, so if you, just exactly one year back, the United Nations launched this, this ambitious initiative called Sustainable Development Goals 2030. I'm sure all of you have heard about it. And these SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, are a universal call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, and to ensure all people 
enjoy peace and prosperity. The, uh, the sustainable development goals work in the spirit of partnership and pragmatism to make sure the right choices are made now to improve life in a sustainable way for future generations. The SDGs are an inclusive agenda. They tackle the root causes of poverty and unite us together to make a positive change to both people and our planet. Service for the benefit and betterment of humanity is, the, is a key fundamental principle of geo for all and we want to contribute and focus our efforts for the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development uh, Goals. And for this, openness is fundamental for all of these 17 goals if you look into it. And I will give you one example. I, I can go through each of these and give you lots of examples of each, uh, on each of these goals, how openness will help us uh, accelerate this, uh, ach achieving these goals. So fundamentally, geo for all was started to ensure to make geospatial education and opportunities are accessible to all, you know, because traditionally, uh, even this, you know, even 10 years back, it was very, it was highly expensive uh, proprietary tools and not many uh, students and uh, even educators uh, worldwide full access, access uh, geospatial uh, courses or to, or uh, start new courses. And now it's dramatically changing, you know, and now it's, you know, I can see even through our networks, we have lots of new MOOC programs. We have a lot of our colleagues are starting new courses in, in countries in Africa, Asia, USA, everywhere. We are, we are, we are, we, our aim is to accelerate this uh, rapidly and make sure lots and lots of students get these opportunities to learn these amazing technologies. And fundamentally, you know, so people ask me, what is your for? And I'll tell them, look, it's, it's education plus empowerment. You know, that's what we are about. So we want to make sure the students are fully empowered. You know, what's the point of teaching them GIS and then taking away the tools after they uh, learn and then forcing them to buy high cost proprietary licenses, you know, that's why we want to make sure you know, they are fully empowered, you know, they, they, you know, they have the tools for them to, you know, start their own companies or, you know, learn GIS or all these, so openness is fundamental to us and we are now working on uh, this vision 2030 on open geospatial science and I will share also some of the ideas in this presentation on what, 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 we, what, what, are, what we want in the future as well. So in Geo for All, the Geo for All, we have a holistic approach on education and I want to highlight the many dimensions of open. The open source software, the open data, open standards, open access to research publication, open education resources. And fundamentally we are fully based on open principles which encompasses all this. So this all coming together of all this is, 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 is kind of like the magic of what makes openness, uh, you know, all these possibilities happen. So I want to give you some examples and you know, I, uh, one of our colleagues, uh, uh, Professor Silvana Kumboin, uh, she's a professor in University of Parana, in Federal University of Parana in Brazil and uh, uh, in, uh, in support of the uh, United Nations Spatial Development Goals, uh, she and her colleagues, all the colleagues in the Open Source Geospatial Technologies ICA Commission, you know, put together some work to see, you know, to show the, some of the uh, uh, the broad range of activities uh, that is happening, uh, you know, using openness in geospatial. And uh, on the top right, you know, there's an example from uh, our colleagues uh, at the University of uh, uh, Politico di Milano in Italy, uh, in Italy, uh, Professor Maria Brovelli, and she and her team has been doing amazing work on uh, her, her lab has been doing amazing work on humanitarian open street maps, you know, and this is. Uh, very important, you know, uh, just last last year in April, uh, you know, as some of you might remember, there were terrible earthquakes in Nepal. And again, you know, our community, our geo for all community came together at that time to provide these, uh, you know, develop these, uh, what is known as humanitarian mapathons to, ma you know, to, uh, for relief, uh, disaster relief. And this particular uh, work that uh, Maria Brovelli and colleagues did was actually teaching uh, in the next generation. So they were, they did a record mapathon with more than 210 year old uh, children in uh, March 2016. So this actually, you know, making sure our future generations, you know, they start, uh, you know, being contributors and they start learning all these technologies and they are key part of all this. And, and uh, Professor Maria Brovelli, she has been doing so much amazing work on this and I will uh, recommend you to visit her lab website as well so you can see a lot of work she's doing. On the top uh, right, again, another example, this is from the University of Pretoria in South Africa. You know, they again, uh, you know, as you might know, you know, in most of the developing countries, one of the biggest problems 
is, uh, you know, uh, many of the uh, citizens, they don't have access to good quality, uh, uh, you know, uh, good quality, uh, uh, basic, uh, basic uh, things like even, you know, access to safe drinking water, you know, all those kind of basic things. And uh, the work that uh, colleagues in Pretoria are doing, actually, the, you know, they have been trying to map this. Uh, mapping is fundamental to developments, and especially in slums, and, you know, they all need to make sure you know, these, they, are, you know they, they have uh, developments happening. We need to make sure, you know, uh, all the infrastructure developments are happening. And the work the, uh, uh, the colleagues in South Africa are doing it are on the first step of that. And there's another example from Brazil that, again, uh, Silvana has been doing. And again, you know, there's, uh, you know, looking at how we can use mapping as a, uh, to highlight the inequalities in, 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 in the society, and especially uh, in her area that is in Cotiba in Brazil. So she has been working on that. And another example from a, Education as example is colleagues in Uruguay, which I will uh, come through later. You know, they are uh, an initiative called GVSIC Batovi. Again, a very important initiative of how we can ensure quality education resources are available for everyone. And, uh, you know, GVSIC Batovi is a good example of a national level initiative, uh, you know, with very little resources, but, you know, getting some good committed people, you know, what we can do to change, uh, you know, change, uh, you know, make, provide opportunities for, for, for the future. And, in the essence, you know, I really like the uh, the, uh, the figure that Silvana put. Is, it's about you know the whole open uh, open uh, philosophy is coming together. The open source software, data, education, and standards. So I would like to uh, now give you a, a, another example of uh, there are all the, I told you a lot of things, but of one example from uh, open beta, and this is an example from an initiative called Godan, which is which I am very much involved in. It is the global open data for agriculture and uh, nutrition. And uh, you know, if you look at it, more than 800 million people worldwide struggle from hunger worldwide. You know, this is a fact. And we have the knowledge, the tools, and the data to lower this figure to zero. But this can only happen if everyone has equal access to data. Access to research and data is critical for feeding the world's hungry. GODAN, or Global Open Data for Agriculture and Nutrition, was formed to support and encourage the proactive sharing of open data to make information about agriculture and nutrition available, accessible, and usable for unrestricted use worldwide to deal with the urgent challenge of ensuring world food security. Godan focuses on building high-level policy and public and private institutional support for open data. The initiative encourages collaboration and cooperation among existing agriculture and open data activities and brings together stakeholders to solve the long-standing global problems in food and nutritional security. And we believe location is very relevant to, 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 to for, for this activity. And geospatial science has a major role to play in securing both food and nutritional security in agriculture systems, particularly to address the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goal 2, which is to end hunger, achieve food security, and, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. So there is a key kind of, you know, this is one good example of how just one open data in agriculture can change, dramatically change, lot of, uh, you know, and, and, and give uh, real benefit to a lot of people globally. So that's just one example. And for those of you who are new to, uh, you know, for example, the open source software, I know a lot of you are involved in open, uh, open education resources. I want to highlight one example from the open source software as well. So this is just to highlight, you know, why it's important to, you know, in terms of, you know, in terms of both research and also for, you know, transparency of, uh, of of uh, of of, of uh, increasing uh, transparency and increasing quality of research and this example I found from NASA uh, NASA is, as you all know is one of the world's you know biggest research organizations they run more, one of the most you know, most mission critical systems in the planet you know and the reason why they say you know they they their key motivation to distribute software for using open source uh, fully for open source is to increase peer review you know and to increase the software quality and uh, as some of you already know, you know, if you are working in academia, you know, the reason why, you know, we submit for peer review journals is, you know, that's very important. So if you want to increase quality, peer review is fundamental. So, you know, that's why, it's, you know, it also increases quality. You know, so, you know, it's very fundamental. People understand this aspect as well. So why is geoeducation important? 
Okay, so this is fundamentally where I come from. Okay, in spite of all these technological, wonderful technological developments, it is a sad fact that the majority of the world's poorest living in urban areas do not still have access to basic facilities. And I mean things like clean water, proper sanitation and hygiene facilities, good quality education opportunities, etc. And the ideally GIS is a fundamental technology in infrastructure development and high cost proprietary GIS is unaffordable to governments, town planners and local authorities in developing and low income countries. In order to achieve United Nations uh, goals of uh, sustainable development goals 2030, it's essential to provide free and open source GIS tools to universities, government organizations in developing countries for helping them achieve these targets. With the availability of open source GIS technology, this now offers a great opportunity for governments and municipal authorities in developing countries to also implement GIS tools for their decision making without having to pay huge annual li uh, licensing costs to proprietary GIS vendors and help improve the lives of some of the most poorest people by giving the new special tools to, these, uh, to the uh, municipal authorities which will help in improving the living standards of the people and helping make sure you know, they have the basic uh, facilities for, 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 their, uh, for their needs as well. So it is with these aims the geo community decided we have to do something and we started and we are now working on something called Open City Smart which I will introduce you a bit later. So how was geo started? You know, when I think that you know, we started from nothing really, humble, very, very humble beginnings. You know, we started in this building actually, you know, in six years back. And our aim was to build, you know, research and teaching infrastructure worldwide. And we had no funding, you know, there was no funding. In fact, when I, when I, I sent out an email to colleagues in, uh, you know, in 2010, I invited, uh, you know, key organizations in the UK. So I invited uh, people like the Association of Geographic Information, which are, which are like the kind of the consortium of industry players in the UK, in GIS, uh, uh, Ordnance Survey, the National Mapping Agency, uh, the British uh, Geological Survey, EDINA, and to my surprise, all of them turned up for the meeting, for the founding meeting, and that, uh, that gave me the energy to start it, and luckily later the University of Nottingham uh, supported me, you know, they uh, gave me couple of uh, internships for students and you know that was how we, we started very 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 simply and very very basically but for me the biggest trend was the amazing support I got from my colleagues and students here it was unbelievable it's just you know that just uh, changed my you know I could I, I without that you know I could not have done anything so you know that was how we started so why we why why why, why did we start it and the only one reason and the social responsibility you know I fundamentally believe that you know if you make resources including software and data openly available, it, uh, it, uh, it just opens you know, uh, an amazing opportunities for everyone to share knowledge and to get this uh, knowledge shared widely and that increases uh, learning opportunities and you know other educational opportunities for everyone. And there are many many examples of this in geo and I don't have time to go through each of them but I, uh, as I told before I thought I will give you one example and that is from the GBC Badovi initiative and the reason I thought I'd give you this example is you know, it, 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 it is, uh, uh, the reason I thought to give you this is, you know, it is an example from a developing country and so it shows you how, uh, how, you know, even if you have very limited resources, you are able to do this. Givisic Batovi is an excellent example of a successful initiative in open principles in education and helps us to understand why scalability and cost uh, in, in sustainability is fundamental. Uh, there's a video of it as well, so if you want to uh, look at the video, you know, it just, uh, you should see that, so really see the impact of what is happening. But through this focus on open principles in education, uh, colleagues at GVC Badovi, uh, led by Sergio Lara and uh, his, uh, his great team uh, across Uruguay, they are now providing high quality spatial education technologies to students in all schools across Uruguay. And they have also uh, if, uh, another initiative called Plan Cibal. Uh, through which they can provide free laptops to all primary and secondary schools in the country so that now truly they have the opportunity to reach every student no matter they are rich or poor with high quality teaching and learning tools and for me this is you know this is amazing this is what we want to do you know this is uh, when I uh, when I hear from all these colleagues of what they are doing you know I get inspired because you know this is exactly you know what we want to make sure you know every student gets this opportunity and scalability is key for cost and sustainability especially if you are thinking of national or global scale of expansion for providing high quality educational opportunities for all. The cost of hardware is getting lower and it will keep decreasing. The cost of hardware will keep decreasing. 
the internet access is, is increasing. So even in developing countries, you know, it is increasing. I can, uh, you know, I, I, I can see from even an example from India, you know, it's, it has been increasing. Really, it's not optimal, but still it's increasing, and it is going to increase. So if we can also provide free and open technologies, open data, open education resources, it will be a big enabler for bridging the digital divide. You know, so cost of software is one of the biggest uh, stumbling blocks. So we have to do something, and we have to remove that artificial barrier. And then lots and lots of students globally are going to benefit. And we we just cannot you know be silent on this. We have to do this. And another good example, actually from Europe, uh, these are colleagues from the uh, UNEP, the United Nations Environment Programs Grid Program in Warsaw. I visited them two years back, and I was inspired by the work they have been doing. They are doing something called GIS uh, at schools. You know, it's, it's actually uh, it's not for students per se. It's actually for the teachers. So this this whole work they have been doing is developing uh, tutorials and uh, learning materials for uh, teaching materials for teachers, not just uh, geography teachers, science teachers, biology teachers. You know, so that they can use uh, like geo technologies to sh show their importance in the particular areas. For example, climate change. If you are a teacher uh, trying to teach climate, uh, climate change to your students, you know, you can use these examples, you, know, you can use a map to convey in a much powerful way of deforestation and all these examples, you know, that's much more powerful and you know, the, all the materials they are making available is fully in KD Commons license, available for everyone, you know, so you feel free to share this with your colleagues who are interested in, you know, in starting new courses in, uh, in school level for, you know, helping students understand these, uh, these Resources. So this this GIS at schools is a very very valuable resource. And Ella from uh, uh, from Poland uh, from the UNAP grid, she has been doing. You know, she and her colleagues. You know, I was so much uh, thank. I'm so much thankful for their work. You know, because, uh, you know through these projects, what they have been doing is is helping is not just in Poland but across the world. You know, this will help uh, a lot of teachers. You know, get uh, be able to teach their students uh, all these technologies in the future. So we already have made huge impact from you know thousands of schools in countries like Uruguay to Spain and thousands of universities worldwide are now benefiting from open principles in geoeducation. And I also believe that ideas that start from nothing are very powerful actually and keep expanding exponentially. The bigger aim is to also advance STEM education across the world and bring together schools, teachers, and students across the world in joint projects and help bring help, uh, you know, build international understanding and global peace. So we are very, very keen to build those uh, communities, uh, to build, uh, so that's why I kept the title as Building Bridges. We want, you know, the global community to come together for this. And I want to put one slide on the research aspect as well, because, you know, for those of you who are researchers, you know, the ability for showing the application of uh, general laws, operation of general laws is fundamental to scientific research, you know, so that's why openness is fundamental for research as well. And for, in, in particularly for uh, geospatial science, you know, there is a, I would say, a convergence that happened, a unique convergence of key developments that happened in the last decade, which was really critical for us to get us this momentum. And that was not just from the software side, but also from the uh, data side, uh, from top-down uh, initiatives like, uh, uh, for example, in the UK, you, uh, uh, you know, the open data, the data.gov.uk, you know, so the governments are now pushing this, you know, they are making sure uh, data is made available to citizens so that it creates innovation opportunities. So there is like a top-level initiative going on, which is very, very, very good, and we really welcome it. And also there is like, uh, you know, uh, bottom-up movements, like, for those of you who know, like OpenStreetMap, OpenStreetMap didn't exist, uh, just 10 years old, but it has now over a million contributors. And I was just uh, creating uh, details of the of in, uh, for one of the papers I'm writing, and they have now, uh, you know, so it's amazing to see this transformation. So these are like volunteer geographic information. So, you know, and think of not just now, think the next 10 years, when, you know, uh, when we have a lot of digital natives, you know, they are all empowered. That they will all be, you know, volunteered geographic information. You know, they will be all be contributing to this and help us uh, enrich, uh, you know, the whole ecosystem. And also, standards are very important. And you know, organizations like OGC for those in the geospatial field help help us bring all these things together. So this is one perspective from the research as well. So what about our our team now? You know, we are. Over 100 research labs worldwide. You know, our uh, the largest number of labs are in uh, in country-wise is in the United States, 
and you know so much activity happening in us you know they are doing amazing work uh, they are starting new MOOC programs which are now you know our colleagues in geo academy the, their MOOC program is uh, benefiting thousands of students not only that there are all the materials are available in github for other educators to start uh, reusing them all in creative commons license so it's a it's a very very uh, you know so it's a exponential kind of activities we are doing to make sure it's, uh, you, know, you know, we share everything to uh, make sure we build those synergies. And in uh, region-wise, you know, Europe is our biggest region. And we are now very confident by, you know, in the next two, three years, we'll have uh, more than 1,000 labs uh, established and help uh, expand these ideas globally as well. So who are we? You know, it's a question, who are we? And I thought to put some images to help you understand who are we. It's, uh, this was from a photo from uh, three years back uh, when we ran this uh, conference in Nottingham uh, for our uh, post g And this is, you know, we are very uh, broad and uh, different, uh, you know, our colleagues are from all different organizations, from government organizations, academia, industry, startups, NGOs, teachers, students. So it's all, all these, uh, you know, people coming together that make this happen. And we are a very global community and we are very proud of it. We are a very diverse community, you know, even if you look at the websites of our labs, you know, you can see the diversity, you know, from uh, the languages, you know, the cultures, we are, we are all uh, different, but we are all united in this objective and that brings us all together for this, uh, for this mission. And we are... And we have been, uh, you know, uh, the initially we were started by scientists and uh, academic, uh, academics basically to build a strong foundation for open geospatial science. But we are a very, uh, we wanted to, the reason why we started was we wanted to create openness in geoeducation for developing creative and open minds in students, uh, which is very critical for building open innovation. Uh, and for sharing open knowledge, which is uh, important for the benefit of the whole society and for our future generation. So for us, it's all about learning and sharing, you know, so this uh, from, uh, from Nottingham Examiner, so we run workshops and all the ideas that we uh, try to make sure, you know, we share these ideas, we learn this, learn from each other and, you know, together we are stronger and we, uh, we have very strong focus on uh, the next generation, so we run uh, these summer schools, this, this is our, uh, one example from our colleagues in Spain in the uh, University of Girona. They have been doing it for, you know, five, five, six years, the uh, open, open, open GI summer school. This primarily aimed at uh, PhD students from all disciplines, so from uh, forestry to health sciences to agriculture. So this summer school, a week, one week summer school brings together uh, students from all these disciplines and teach, you know, uh, and introduce them to these technologies. But more importantly, we give them away the tools as well. So then they are fully empowered. They can start their own companies. They can start, you know, their consultancy. They don't have to pay anybody anything. Or you know, that's that's our philosophy. We want to make sure they, you know, they lead us. You know, they are the people who will, you know, who, who are going to push this for the for the future. And we want to make sure they're fully em empowered and they have the full capacity to do this for the future as well. And in, in Nottingham, we have been also doing it for uh, expanding this for uh, teaching, teaching government organizations through workshops. You know, we want to make sure governments also start. It's also, also important, uh, you know, taxpayers' money is uh, precious and it should not be wasted. So that's very important that, uh, you know, now UK has a, uh, uh, has a policy on open source, open standards, uh, open data action plan. So it's very, uh, a lot of activities happening and it's, it's actually now saving. I have. Uh, I didn't put that slide there, but, but I can send you the slides on that uh, where, you know, the cost savings are mentioned, you know, it's, uh, the, uh, once this open, uh, the open principles have been implemented in, within the UK government department. So that's again another talk, but there is a lot of, uh, I, I'm also involved in uh, that area as well because I'm very keen to make sure that, you know, the, the taxpayers' money is spent wisely and, you know, uh, that has, you know, that has been invested. Uh, not on buying proprietary software, but you know, invested in other important things like healthcare or uh, you know, uh, education and improving all these things. So that's that's another part. And we are very multidisciplinary. You know, so if you look at our lab uh, websites, you know, you will see examples from uh, you know our colleagues from you know agriculture science to um, uh, to you know geodesy, geodesy to geomatics to civil engineering. So because you know, mapping and technology, mapping and uh, geospatial science is very broad. So we are very, very multidisciplinary as well, and we are proud of that fact. And 
One thing that unites us, when I look at all our colleagues globally, it's all, we are all passionate about research and education. So it doesn't matter which country you are from, which, you know, which language you speak, it doesn't matter. You know, we, are all, we all have that same passion to teach and learn and, uh, and share uh, this fantastic technologies with other, other people as well. So that's, that's what that unites us, uh, uh, unites us all. So now I want to give you one example. Again, I send uh, uh, the video of this to uh, to Teresa, uh, and you can sh uh, see the video of it. But this one example, the, remember the example I told you, you know, why we need uh, you know these tools for empowering, uh, especially uh, the urban citizens in uh, developing countries. And to do that, we started an initiative. Again, we had we did not have any funding. Just joining together, good people together, we started an initiative called Open City Smart. The open platform for smart cities, and you know you can watch the video link uh, that uh, Teresa put. But uh, this this is again thanks to colleagues uh, Patrick Hogan from NASA and Chris Petit uh, from the University of South Wales in Australia, and a great team of amazing colleagues, uh, volunteers globally, who are all working in this uh, initiative called Open City Smart. Open City Smart builds and uses open solutions to build richer toolboxes that empowers uh, empower organizations and people around the globe to handle spatial and also non-spatial data. We believe this will create innovation opportunities uh, globally and locally. And you can find those details, and if you're interested, you know, the video will give you more ideas of what we are doing with that. With that. And also, uh, thanks to, again, many of our colleagues globally, we, are not we have now uh, dedicated research labs and, uh, and also dedicated journals, which are now in place to advance our open view spatial science for the future. It is this global research outlook that is fundamental to the success of any discipline. And you know, we are very, very keen that we maintain that global outlook. So it's now time for us to think and plan actions for the future. And it is important that we bring together ideas and inputs from the wider community and harness the wisdom to help shape our vision for open geospatial science for 2030 and future. And we want to do that by building synergies uh, with the three goals of the European Union's research and innovation policy, that are the open innovation, open science, and open to the world. So that's what we are doing in the, uh, the whole. So we are now harnessing ideas uh, to bring this uh, open, uh, the vision for, 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 for 2030 in, in synergies with, uh, with the uh, United Nations uh, uh, SDG goals as well. So I want to highlight uh, one important fact, especially for those of you who are scientists. You know, science is not a black box. Okay, the toolkits uh, uh, have to be open, and you know, it has to be built upon. So transparency is fundamental to scientific research and advancement. So this is exactly what we have. Me, uh, our colleagues are all working on. And uh, the societal challenges we face are all multidisciplinary in nature. You know, so whichever challenge you face from the, uh, the agriculture example I told you from uh, the Godan, the, uh, you know, if you want to feed 800 million people or if you want to give good quality of life to, you know, uh, to our, uh, again, millions of families across the world living in very, very poor conditions in urban slums. You know, this is, these are all multidisciplinary challenges. You know, we, we cannot have silo mentalities. We need to bring together people. And a network approach is essential to bring expert researchers, scientists, stakeholders together to solve these problems. And for us, for our vision 2030, there are three fundamental things. You know, the transparency of research is fundamental. And so we, uh, you know, there should be no black boxes or proprietary barriers, artificial barriers, uh, you know, to for advancement of science. And geospatial science should be fully built on open principles. And, uh, you know, we believe, you know, Geospatial science should be open geospatial science. You know, that's what we want to work on and we want to align with other synergies, synergic activities like the European Commission's uh, uh, policy on open innovation, open uh, science, open to the world and also to the, uh, the United Nations SDGs. Uh, 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 together we are, I'm very confident we will be able to do this because, you know, once when, when I see how we started with nothing and that's why I told this, uh, word uh, which I learned actually called serendipity. It's unbelievable when you know when a group of people come together on a common objective. You know, so many amazing things happen. So why uh, you know why open to special science? And you know there are lots and lots of examples. And hopefully you, you all got some 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 ideas of what from my presentation uh, from uh, the examples I gave you before. But again, from a government perspective, from you know not just from the European governments and European Commission, but also governments worldwide. They are all constantly seeking a greater return on their investment in research. 
And part of this, part of the answer is to ensure the better reuse of data, software and technology between research programs, broader cross-disciplinary and institutional participation in major research projects, and more frequent and rapid uptake of research results by startups, SMEs, industries, and government. And open geospatial science, I believe, will fundamentally help in empowering staff and students, and also build capacities in, in uh, poor countries, developing countries. And more importantly, you know, it develops creative and open minds in students. And this is very critical for if you want if you want uh, open innovation for future. You know, we need to make sure we make sure our students, you know, have that open mind. And you know, it, it, it fundamentally, and that's what we are all about. It, it contributes to building up open knowledge for the benefit of the whole society and for our future generations. So you know, it's. Uh, you know, one of my fundamental beliefs is that, you know, access to quality education opportunities is everyone's birthright. You know, it doesn't matter where you are born, you know, you know, you have to, you have the right for education and quality education is everyone's birthright, all right? And so to do that, and now we have opportunity to do that, you know, we, and for me, technology is a big level, up, you know, so we should not put artificial barriers, you know, high cost proprietary barriers on, on you know, because either now we have a truly great opportunity because the affording hardware costs, Increasing uh, uh, software, increasing uh, um, internet penetration. You know, we now truly have an opportunity to provide quality education opportunities for everyone. And I have seen this. You know, when I when I each time I go to India, I visit some of the poorest schools. All right, and you know, it's amazing. You know, even in one of the schools, I went you know, three years back. I, uh, you know, they had just three, four computers, right? and now if, if they, they don't have proper library or anything. But these three, four computers, all running open source software connected to the internet, you know, now the, the students are accessing uh, Wikipedia, you know, it's amazing how, you know, I was, when I saw this, I, I just thought, look, this, I, I need to do something, you know, we, we truly can, uh, can give, give some opportunities to these, you know, we can open the doors for, you know, all these students, not just uh, in one place, but globally, you know, if you all uh, think globally and, you know, we can all come together, it's truly possible, and I truly believe, you know, we, in just 10 years time, if you want to do it, we can do it, we can, you know, we can provide these opportunities and with all these amazing technologies out there, it's just uh, that willpower and coming together of good people that, that will make this happen. And uh, to, uh, that's why I gave you the example from Uruguay to show you that this is not like you need big funding or anything. It's just, you know, some good people coming together with good ideas, we can do it. And I, uh, I want to uh, thank again, you know, my colleagues across the world, you know, it, it, uh, even though I presented it, all the work I presented is actually my colleagues amazing work they have been doing, you know, so it's unbelievable the work that they all have uh, been doing and, you know, we are all working on this bigger aim to eradicate extreme poverty and enable uh, shared prosperity of all and we need, you know, I really hope the open education community will join us for this because we really need you and, you know, that, as I told you in the beginning, the synergies of joining minds and communities on a common mission make, you know, the seemingly impossible possible. Uh, possible. And I can tell you because, you know, when I started Geo for All without any funding, you know, initially we were laughed at because, you know, <laughs> some people just thought, you know, if you don't have, don't have any funding, you know, nothing is going to happen. But, you know, again, it's, you know, uh, the, you know it's just uh, when you, uh, it's, it's that, you know, it's something like uh, like that serendipity word. It's unbelievable, but, you know, sometimes, you know, things happen, you know, even if you don't have funding or, you know, anything uh, else, you know, if you get, uh, you know, if you just start doing it, you know, it's like you, yeah, you know, there's a saying that you know if you, you know, you have to have faith, and you know you you have to just jump, and the net will, uh, you know, the the net will come uh, below you. So it's like you know you have to have a faith and do things. It doesn't matter if you have funding or not. You just start doing it, and that's what we are doing it. And hopefully, I really hope you know uh, more and more colleagues will start building uh, ideas for this. So again, thanks again for your uh, for listening to me and for for giving me this opportunity to share these ideas with you all today. Wow, Sachis. If you have any so questions, you know, us. Ask me. Thank you. <laughs> there is a little storm going on on Twitter at the moment, and we've, I've seen from colleagues' uh, reactions in the chat, we are, we are just so overwhelmed by your passion and your enthusiasm, um, that it's, and it's, and it's uh, contagious, which is wonderful. Thank you so much for giving us so much to think about and so much to inspire us. There have been a few questions in the chat. I'm going to um, come back to those now. Um, and uh, I'll start with a question that came from Therese Bird, who's very experienced in the open uh, community. 
and uh, she's particularly now involved in uh, pharmacology and medicine. So she mm -hmm. asks, has geo for all encountered any setbacks from institutions or bodies, entities who perhaps felt threatened by the work and by the philosophy? Yes, uh, you know, it's interesting because, you know, we, uh, there was a lot of, initially very, very, uh, uh, we have faced a lot of difficulties, especially from some big proprietary vendors, GIS vendors, and, you know, so, you know, so for me, you know, when I, when I think about it, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, I believe everyone has a place in, uh, in the world, you know, it's not just, you know, so, you know, every, every, uh, you know, so it's like, uh, you know, uh, we have to, uh, uh, you know, we have to provide opportunities for everyone. And we cannot just create artificial barriers. And like Sam, I told you, you know, this, when I see these students in India, you know, or, I, or some of these poor schools, you know, when, you know, why should, why should someone create artificial barriers for them to uh, not, uh, not, you know, it's not like a real barrier, it's an artificial barrier. If you, you know, you, uh, you know hardware cost, I can understand, you know. If, uh, the cost for you know making hardware there is a cost to it, you know uh, you know cost for internet connectivity there is a cost to it. But software cost is you know it's, it's you know it's 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 exaggerated. You know the cost of replicating software is you know technically zero. So you know you are artificially uh, you know make you know, it's like an artificial barrier. So I for me you know when I think about it you know even though we face a lot of difficulties you know that's why I always think it's you know we we didn't have funding. And we faced a lot of difficulties, so we came through all this, you know, so it, it was a difficult journey, we, you know, there were a lot of uh, times, you know, I was, uh, you know, it, it is, it, even though when uh, thinking back, you know, I can be see, you know, we have hundreds of laps and all these things happening, you know, there was lots of uh, difficulties, but for me, you know, the biggest thing was my colleagues globally, you know, that, that, without that I would not have done anything. For example, you know, everything, you know, when I, when we ha wanted a website, you know, I sent an email out and colleagues from University of Southampton. You know, they set up the website for us. You know, when we wanted webinars, it was colleagues from the University of Denver in the USA. They have, they are running the webinars for us. You know, our newsletters are run by our colleagues in uh, in Greece. You know, so it's all, you know, it's all these distributed kind of activities. So it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, so what I will uh, t uh, tell is, you know, there, there will, there, you know, there might be, you know, uh, um, uh, big uh, vendor interest you know, who want to stop this, you know, but I am very confident, it, uh, it's, it's very, you know, uh, uh, something which you do for global good, you know, it will keep going, you know, however uh, big or uh, powerful, you know, the vendors are, you know, you know, I really hope they will understand this and they will also try to, uh, you know, help us or at least, you know, not uh, try to stop us, that's my request to all of them, you know, please don't try to stop us, you know, we are, you know, this, you know, what, what is the point, you know, when I see this, uh, you know, students in, in the small schools, you know, what, what does anyone gain from, you know, stopping the, you know, learn, get this access, you know, they don't, the time I told you, they don't have access to, till now they don't have access to anything, you know, no proper library, the school I went to, they, they didn't have access to even a proper library, you know, so, you know, now for the first time, you know, these three computers, they are getting access to Wikipedia and, you know, immediately, and I remember one of the, uh, I remember one question I was asked by one of the students, okay, she, she was, you know, my son's age now, you know, she, so she asked me this question, you know, I was actually telling them about the importance of, uh, you know, education and in, in moving forward, because one of the things I always remember is even like 10 years back when I used to go to these schools, I used to think in my head, you know, how, I see amazing students, you know, huge potential, but I used to think, you know, how many of them will go for higher studies or, you know, even go for jobs because, not because of their fault, because of, you know, their, their circumstances, you know, so they, were, they don't have access to basic things, so, you know, so there is very, uh, very little they can achieve. Uh, but when I, when I saw this school in 2010, that time, uh, with these three computers, you know, having access to uh, uh, this uh, Wikipedia and all those ideas, that was the time when I realized, you know, this is, this is going to fundamentally change if we can work on this. And the that student was the question that student asked me was, uh, if I translate it, it, it is uh, like, uh, uh, will this be always available to us? You know, that was one of the, the hardest questions I was. You know, I have been to a lot of conferences, a lot of events, but that question I remember when she asked me. You know, I looked at her and, you know, I was looking at her and, you know, because you had to first put yourself in, in into their shoes. You know, so these students. They are for the first time, you know, they are seeing an opportunity, you know, they are seeing, 
you know, uh, they are seeing this, uh, this amazing kind of magic Hindu and for now their biggest fear is will this be taken away from them. And I told her straight away, look, you know, you don't have to worry about it, you know, because this is not this, you know, there are thousands of people globally who are fighting for you. So you can be assured that you know, this will be available for you for the future. And I still remember her spice. So it's, it's important we all join together, you know, don't worry about big vendors trying to stop you or whoever, but you know, we, we have a moral responsibility because these people, you know, these students don't have a voice in the system. Okay, so they are the people who desperately need this and they don't have a voice in the system. So, you know, I and people like you are, are their voice, you know, so you know, I got, as I told you, I, I, I got an opportunity to learn this pure by pure chance, so I know, it's now my duty, you know, so oh, I will do wonderful. everything in my power to make sure I do that. That's just amazing and you're so inspiring. And I love this idea of distributed cooperation and the, the fact that, you know, individuals, we have this sort of mindset that is that there's going to be a project, with the project comes funding, with the funding comes a hierarchy, and then things happen in a, in a kind of an enclosed but logical and listed way with sets of outputs, and I've been involved in lots of projects like that. The, what, what I love about this is the connectedness and the fact, and I've seen it both in the Open Badge conference that we did, uh, and in other aspects of work that I've done voluntarily, where serendipitous connections, in my case through Twitter, came about and everybody just says, well, I'll do that bit for you and I'll do that bit for you. And I love the humility of your approach, Sachith, as well, where you're acknowledging that, uh, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts that we all have a little bit and it, to play a part to play here and just to sort of highlight a comment that came up in the chat from Lucy <coughs> who says there's no question that the demand for open education and open source exists but as one individual how can I still contribute <coughs> excuse me and still support myself <coughs> because many of us get involved in these sort of endeavours without any um, <coughs> pay. Um, so, yeah, I can see that dilemma. But I think <coughs> what I can see happening is that you, put, you can put in what you are willing to put in. And if everybody does that, it is possible to achieve something even as enormous as you have achieved here, something global uh, and something huge. Um, <coughs> it's kind of, you know, I suppose if we think of the analogy of the ant, if we have lots of little worker ants doing their, their bit, you can make a huge termite mound or, a, you know, you can achieve a great deal. It's this aspect as well that came through in your presentation of mutual support because sometimes it can feel, for those of us in, in research intensive universities and who don't have the vision that Nottingham has shown here, it can feel as though uh, you're battling uh, huge sort of sets of interests who, who just don't get it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was quite inspired and I tweeted yesterday about the launch of the Open Models book um, that has just come out and I think if we've got greater collaboration and cooperation across the open community, all things open, as you have pointed out, open source, open uh, standards, um, uh, OER, open data, all of these things together, we, we have this open word in, in common, so let's not silo ourselves, let's connect and, and share our support. Uh, across the board. Um, really inspiring and, and absolutely wonderful. I think the, the, your talk has been so comprehensive. We don't have a lot of questions in the chat, um, but we do have lots of reaction and I'm sure we're going to have lots of reaction to this recording as well. Um, and I'm really grateful to you for your time. We have just um, five minutes left. So if anybody has any further questions, please pop them in the chat or feel free to just raise a hand if you want me to pass the mic to you so you can speak to Sujit directly. Um, as a little reminder here of um, the Association for Learning Technology who have uh, provided us with an online space for the Open Education Special Interest uh, Group and support uh, what we do in that way. 
And uh, I have been tweeting using the hashtag OpenEdSig. Um, so, you know, if you, if you are on Twitter and you want to revisit that, I will um, do a little storyify for today's event as well to pull, pull the messages together because you've provided us with some great media too, Sachith, with the videos and the um, uh, various screenshots along the way. Um, so I'm just going to open the floor as open is the keyword. Um, so if anybody has, uh, would like to ask a question or speak to Sachith directly, I'm so in awe of Sachith because Oh, thank you, Lucy. Um, it's great to have you here, and I hope you'll uh, uh, you'll participate and join and continue this conversation and find things that you're happy to uh, to join in with. Um, I I speak French and Spanish, but I know just how daunting it is to make presentations in a language other than your own. And mm -hmm. you have been totally. Um, or inspiring in your presentation in your second language. Um, so thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much for thank that. You. I'm trying to learn you today. <laughs> well, look, you, you have so many Indian languages as well, so yes. <laughs> we wouldn't know where to start. So I, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful that you've learned English and you've shared through, <laughs> through that medium today. Thank you so much. And I can see all your expressions of thanks coming in through, through the chat. I'm going to... Uh, Add some applause there from the emoticons, um, and I think we all want to give you a really big hand. So thank you so much for starting our Open Ed Sig webinar series in such a passionate and impassioned way. Chucka, let me just pass you the uh, pass you a mic um, so you can uh, speak to us if you'd like to. There we go. So if you press the talk button. Now you should be able to uh, to speak to us, Tucker, if you'd like to. No, thank you. That was a mistake, actually. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, Thanks all for your responses. I'm going to switch the recording off now so that we can make the uh, recording available as soon as possible, and we'll be sharing that uh, widely. Thank you so much, Sachith, for your time, your energy, Thank and your you passion. All beautifully done. And uh, don't forget to uh, to join us on the Open Ed Sig site, which Therese has just shared for us there as well in the yes, chat. I will. Thank you all for for.